All right, welcome back to the second video of using OpenFast wind turbine simulation. Today we're going to be talking about another simulation software that generates wind turbulence for us, and that is called TurbSim. Now, if you follow this link, it'll take you, let's give it a shot, to here, to the TurbSim downloads. You want to grab the newest one. Um, well, it's actually, this is the one right here. Grab the... 150.x.exe, even though the newest version is 2.0. But the one I've been using is this one, and I'm on Windows 10. And then download it into any directory that you can get to. So I just created a new directory in my uh, folder called TurbSim, and that's where I saved it. Now, once it's saved, the only file you're going to have is this zip file. You're going to double click it, and it's going to extract every else. Now from here, do not change or mess with anything until you watch this video fully, or at least until the point of where you can start following along. So before we jump into this, let's do a quick review of why we are doing this. Okay, so last time at the end of our video, we discussed how to change the basic wind speed um, in the document to a steady constant value where it creates a straight line. So we have turbulent here on the left, straight line on the right. And you do that by editing what they call the inflow wind file. So let's take a peek at that real quick. Let's go to first, like how do we figure out that's where we need to be? Quick review. In our main.fst that we edit with Notepad++, it tells you the input file right here. The inflow wind. This is where it's getting its wind parameters and, and all that fun stuff. So let's take a peek at that. So I have it open right here. Okay. So it has this thing called wind type right here. Line 5. There's a value of 1, which is steady, 2 is uniform, 3 is a binary turbsim file. We're not going to discuss 4, 5, 6, or 7. That's out of the scope of this project. If we were to switch this to 1, that takes us down to these conditions of line 13. We can change the wind speed, the horizontal wind speed, from 12 to 25 like we did. And it's a straight line. Reference height for the hub. This is where the hub is at. Um, 90 meters above ground. So this will generate that flat line. But now we've switched it back to three because we want to test a little bit more accurate situation because wind in the real world is not constant. It is turbulent. It fluctuates a lot. So if you look here, line 21, it says wind slash 90 meters, 12 meters per second tower.bts. That is the file that it's currently using. So let's go to that wind folder. It's underneath the five megawatt baseline because everything seems to pull from here. There's the wind folder and here's the dot BTS. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you and show you how to generate this BTS file, but let's take a peek at it first. Now, if you've downloaded pi.view as described in the document, you take this file, you drag, and you drop it, and it will open and show you the data. Notice the mean wind speed is 12.1. Okay, This Z in meters is how big the grid of wind is. Imagine, we know we have an infinite amount of wind and air that's floating around us, but imagine taking a section that's 160 by 160, and that's what's flying towards our wind turbine. Now, it has to be a certain size, because if it's too small, it will air out, saying that your grid in Z direction is too small. Because since we are using the LAND DLL wind turbine, we have this Aerodyne 15.dat, and it has, aero, um, it has uh, nodes for the aerodynamic loads that go a little bit below the diameter of the wind turbine blades. And I remember each blade is 63 meters, so two of those 
was at 126. So I have found that 145 meters for the grid is too small, but 155 is, it works. And it produced an error saying your grid is too small by 8.5261 meters. So I just added nine meters to my 145. Actually, I just added 10, did 155, and it worked just fine. That's because some of these nodes go down the tower so it can pick up loads. I don't know if we can see that actually in here, the grid size for the nodes. Um, that might be beyond, okay, the airfoil. It might be in one of these files. It's kind of beyond the scope of this, but in case you want to look, you're more than welcome to go around and do the thing. You know, number of tower nodes. Use the analysis, 12 tower nodes. Okay, so we have 12 tower nodes. Now, figuring out the distance between each one of those tower nodes is why I was getting the error. Because we have the 126 meter diameter for the um, for the blades, plus the 12 tower nodes. Now, if each one of those tower nodes is, I don't know, two meters, that's another 24 meters if they're two meters apart. It's probably in here the distance, but we're not going to worry about that. Okay, so. We've been able to view what that .bts file looks like. Now, how do we generate that? Okay, so I'm gonna minimize this because we're gonna need this file open again, the inflow wind 12 meters per second dot dat. Okay, I'm gonna open up where everything was set for turbsim. Now, there's gonna be this one called turbsim.imp. You're gonna right click and you're gonna edit. Okay, do not mess with anything in the first few lines. What you do want to set, to f you want to set um, generate root name dot bin dot dat dot hh all to false. You want to set generate dot bts to true and root name. That's just going to grab turb sim as its root name. I don't know where I can set the root name. You probably set it in here somewhere. I just haven't really cared. And then true for a dot wind file in case you want to use it later on, but I don't need it. But it's okay. Uh, clockwise, um, not necessary for iodine, but fulfilled binary files, we need it. So that needs to be set to true. Okay. Now, model specifications. This is the most important part, or you'll have headache after headache. I spent probably 15 hours trying to figure out the error message that was given from the command line. It doesn't help if you have dyslexia like me either. So, number of grid size. This used to be 13, but I increased it to 31. So there's more uh, points. Instead of being 13 docks across and 13 down in 155 by 145, so there's a lot of space in between them. I wanted it to be more precise, so I increased those. Uh, this was set at 630 and 60 for me by default. Yours might need to be changed. The hub height is 90. Okay, the grid height. I have it working at 155 by 145. So the grid width should be, oh yeah, it tells you that it should be at least half, it needs to be greater than half the grid height. So, that's what the hub height needs to be. And if our grid height is 155, half of that 90 is greater than that barely. So you have to be, because let's see, yeah, 180 is the max that we could go before things probably freak out. Okay, then along here, the meteorological boundary conditions, originally it's set to smooth. But the problem is, if you run it at smooth and forget to change it, what happens is it generates an empty file. It doesn't really give you an error. It just generates an empty file. And that's because it's missing a structure format that you have to download. But smooth is not what we need. We want it to be generated using what we call the Camille 
distribution and, and it's just a more turbulent I don't want to use the word more turbulent it's not smooth it's more realistic of what you would expect in the real world so set your curve model to that I changed nothing here the reference height um, height of the reference wind speed I have default of 84.286 I don't know if I need to change Let's see, height of the reference wind speed. Might need to change this to 90 to match the hub height because you want the hub height to be smack in the center. Um, this one right here, so might want to change this one to 90. Give it a test. If it fails, change it back to what it was. The wind speed, yours should be 18.2 something. Keep it at that or change it to whatever you want, but it's best to keep it at default until you get it to work. Okay. And then from here, I touched nothing else. Then when you're done, just control S for saving. And then you should have a working file. So how do we run this now? Okay. That's a great question. So make sure nothing is highlighted. You're going to hold shift, you're going to right click, and you hit open. PowerShell window here. What you're going to do is you're going to type in dot this application right here, and you're going to run it. Now I'm not going to run it because it takes about 10 minutes to complete, and it should go through and say it terminated successfully, and it will stay stuck at computing the U vector matrices, and it will stay there for about probably eight minutes and then move on to the um, V and X, I think, are the two other coordinates. I think it uses U, V, and X. And that's all you have to do to run it. And once it completes successfully, then all you need to do is take your file. I renamed mine to turn sim 15 because it tells me my wind speed is 15. Then you're going to copy it. And you're going to go back to the baseline folder, to the wind, and then you're going to paste it right into here. Okay. Then the last thing you need to do is open up the dot dat, the inflow wind 12 meters per second dot dat. Okay. Go back to section three. Change this name from 90 meters, 12 meters per second dot. Uh, tower.bts to turbsim15.bts or whatever the name of your file is. Be sure to watch capitalization and then save this file. And then all you have to do is rerun the .fst file by doing, let's do this, whoops, didn't want to do that. Going to this one, let's do this one a little bit fast. Let's drag this over here. Okay. Now you just drag, drop it onto that. And now you'll see it says speed of 12 meters per second. That's what mine is running. I'm using 12 because I need that for my testing purposes. And you'll notice it's working. And it will go through time. Now, if if it fails, this is where right on that screen if it's going to make a ding and then it's going to turn off it means it's failed the fastest way to see what your area is is when you hear that ding hurry and click on the um, command and it will freeze it where it's at and it will tell you the error so it could be this is the error that I was receiving right here um, 8.5261 meters is below the grid and no tower points are defined Nowhere in here was this telling me that it had anything to do. Oh, wait, this is not mine. Let's go to mine. Sorry about that. Okay. Gotta go down. Okay. Right here. Grid too small in Z direction. La da da da. Nowhere in here did it tell me 
that I had an issue with aerodynamics, except right here. Okay, I didn't know. That's probably referencing aerodynamic and the servo data. If I would have recognized that output, then I would have been able to know that there's probably those loads. I did not know that. But you can see the first test was 126 meters too small. So I was running at, I think, 30 by 30. So um, I changed it to 145 by 145, which then gave me this error. And then I was on the forums and I was just like, okay, kind of bugged. And then I um, saw on here his response. Uh, let's see. Whoops. Yeah, right here. You likely have aerodynamic nodes that extend along the tower below the rotor. So a couple of things. Either set the height larger than the width or set this true in the file. But I just did the height larger than the width because I wanted to see if it would work. And it did. Okay, so now that your file works, you can do what we did previously in the other video, and everything should be golden. So, the next video, we'll be talking about how to use MLife to generate. Um, no, OpenFast generates the fatigue loads. Now we're going to use MLife to hopefully find and predict cycles to failure. For wind turbine blade all right and the document this is outdated right now because I thought everything was correct in here but I need to go through and re-edit it so don't pay attention to half the stuff all right thank you very much for watching and we will go from here